Hi, everybody. I'm Peter. Uh, I want to talk about Istio and why do we actually need it. Um, I want to start with some motivation here. Because speaking DevOps, like, there are so many things everybody says you shouldn't do when you're in DevOps team or where you're doing Agile. And I want to say one thing, that when you're doing Agile and when you're doing DevOps, you're basically looking for a cooperation with cross-functional teams, which means cross-functional team is a team of people which can cooperate together, but they are still specialized, so they can use the same tooling across the team, which is a really hard challenge. Before the, because there are times when new tooling comes into the team, and you see those two people just clashing together, saying, all right, we want this new tooling, and there, there's a group, peop, group of people which are saying, well, this is too hard, we can't do that, I don't feel the value, and all this, all this stuff. And so the, the thing that's happening here is basically the barrier for the entry to, to these new technologies is too high for everybody else, so they won't accept it. And the way we do this, or the way we deal with this, is basically by creating APIs. And APIs, as you may know, basically abstract what's under the hood, so developers can actually just, uh, just concentrate on what steps do I need to take to create my solution or to come to a final state. But if we look at it, look at it even further, and that's what Kubernetes and Istio does, is they actually create declarative APIs. So what you can do with, with APIs, they're abstract the implementation, but you still need to know the steps. With declarative APIs, you don't actually need these steps. All you need is that you want some final state. And it's then on the system to actually determine what steps to take to get to your final state. We'll see this in a, in a couple of seconds. And the system has one property. And the system is easy to start with, but it's really hard to master. And that's because we just created two levels of, of abstraction so people can actually come in and say, all right, I want to deploy this. The system will basically say how to do that or do it uh, under the hood. But then if we want to optimize these things or try something like different, <laughs> let's say, uh, like a different deployment, we just need to drill down to the technology and there's a lot of things that we must work on and that's why we have the specialized roles in the teams. But it's good for everybody else to just understand what, what the final stay is and what, what the technologies can do. But we need to start with Kubernetes first. And that's because Istio actually builds on Kubernetes, which means we, we still need some Kubernetes infrastructure built in to then enhance it with Istio. And I want to start with a really simple examples here. Uh, you don't need to focus on the, on the wall code, you just need to focus on that, uh, on the red rectangle. But this is our fully runnable, runnable configuration. And so what, you, what you're doing here is basically you're saying just run Nginx 1.14 and I don't care how you do it. Under the hood, it pulls the image, it stores it somewhere, and so on and so on. So, so the system basically determined what steps to take to create this, uh, this configuration. What more? You can say something like this. You can just edit this, the same configuration and just say, oh, well, all right, I don't want just one replica, I want three of them. Now, what happens here is systems like Kubernetes and Istio, they see a conflict because you want just one replica, and it sees one replica that's running, but suddenly you want three. So it will, again, determine the steps that it needs to take to get three of your replicas up and running. And the last thing that I want to talk with Istio and what we need to actually build Istio into, uh, talk about Kubernetes, is we want to expose these services. So we can do scheduling, we can do scaling, we can also expose services which gives us a service discovery capabilities. What this means is you can see the, the first example is the same deployment, but it has labels, and you'll see labels everywhere in the Kubernetes world, because they are kind of a uh, way that we describe any, any workload or any resource in the cluster. So what we're doing is every resource that you label is then in, is in queryable uh, by you or by other resources in the cluster, and what we see is in the first rectangle, there's a label called that app is Nginx. So all the blue rectangles there are then labeled app Nginx. And the service then basically just queries the cluster and says, all right, give me all 
uh, all workloads that are app engines. So this way it basically connects. Uh, one disclaimer, uh, there's no limit to how, you actually, uh, to how you actually label things. So you can just deploy Apache and then label it engines and nothing happens, it will just work. But uh, you may be really surprised what happens if, if you do something like that. Uh, so there are no limits to this. Just, uh, and so there are, there are more things. I, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna give uh, examples of these because uh, they are just too complicated for this session. But you can also mount volumes, mount configurations, certificates, and all this stuff. And there's one more feature that's really, really, really cool at these, at these things. And that's what's happen, what, what happens when node fails or when the pod, pod's deleted or something. But we get our configuration that says, hey, we want three replicas and we only have two. Well, Kubernetes again determines that there's this state and then tries to uh, make steps to repair this. What it does is basically it replaces the pod for you. So you don't, you don't, need, to, um, you don't need to worry that you are not running the configuration that you want because uh, in, a, in a really, like, if you, if you have a good state in a cluster and if, it, if it's healthy, then you'll always be running uh, what you want in your declarative configurations. But there's one thing, and what we modeled is a really basic scenario, basically exposing free workloads of engines. Uh, it's nothing hard, but what about the things that are advanced, like A-B testing? or policy enforcement, if you want to enforce TLS between, like in your own communications, or if you want to load balance in a different style than round robin, which Kubernetes does. Um, it's kind of a, a hard topic, and that's where uh, you, don't, you don't really see this in, in many uh, starting projects because you don't need it. But when you start needing these things, uh, Kubernetes really uh, starts to fall short on these and you need to think about how you actually want to implement these. So this example that we'll have right now, we'll use the same, same uh, infrastructure that we built just, right, just now with Kubernetes uh, with, one different, with one change. It's a, it's a really simple change. And that's that we have two versions instead of one. And our goal is right now to split the traffic to create A-B testing to actually uh, Use, H, like, use HTTP headers to split the traffic in a different versions. So um, what you can see is we have two versions and these, ha these have also one new label and the label is below uh, the rectangles and its version. So we have app engines on all of them so the service can see them but we also have labeled them uh, as, uh, as versions. What we can do right now is we can we can walk through all these like, uh, free components of Istio uh, that will enable us to do this. And the first component is called destination rule. What destination rule does is it creates a policies that should be applied to a traffic that comes to a service, which means the traffic is already there. It came to your service, which means it was already handled by something. But now uh, you, need to, you need to basically say, what should you do with the traffic? And what you can do here is you can define load balancing policies or load balancing strategies, uh, which can be round robin or based on, on some cookies and so on. And also, uh, there's one more feature, which is uh, what, we, what we will be looking at, and it's called subsets. This is, this is within destination rules. And what subsets do is they actually create a set within the service, within the, the global subset of the service, which can, where we can define what labels to use to distinguish between these versions. So now, here we say, we know that we have two versions, two different versions running, but we wanna tag them so we can then direct traffic to this version or this version instead of just saying, all right, wherever it goes, we're okay with that. And it is with this simple configuration, you just say, all right, these labels are uh, those who are you, which are used to determine if it's version one or version two. Now, what we need to do next is this is a core feature of Istio and it's a kind of big example. So uh, what you need to focus on right now is the, on, on the right hand or on the right side, uh, which, mean, which is the, the example uh, where, we, where we actually have an example, example traffic 
that's containing HTTP header uh, service version, version one. What we want to do with this traffic is we want to direct this traffic to the service and then the service must recognize this traffic and put it into or, or redirect it into workloads that are labeled with version one, right? So it, it feels like a, an easy job and it, it, uh, it, it also is with <laughs> virtual services. Uh, where there are two rules, or uh, virtual services are basically routers. And they work in a way that uh, you define rules under which, should, uh, which, must, which, must, um, which must match or which must be true if we want to direct traffic that way. We have two rules here. The one is the big rectangle, and the second one is below it. And the first rule basically says, match everything that has headers with a service version version two, exactly, <laughs> not a prefix, nothing else, it's like exactly version two, and then route this traffic to a destination, which is our service, but to a subset called version two. And we also have the second rule, and this rule has, has no matches, which is like a default case. So if no rule is matched, then the default case is used. And in, in this example, what we do is we, uh, for, for the traffic on the right side, what, it ha what, it, what happens is it goes to the first rule and it says no, because it, it doesn't match it, but it then goes to the second rule, which is basically a default case. So it rolls the traffic to the version one. What would happen if you, if you just switched it to the version three or version four or version five, they would still be uh, all routed to the version one, because that's the default case we have right now. But if you would create more subsets for these versions, then you, you, you could actually create these rules in virtual services, so you could direct the traffic there. And there are more features like this in virtual services. Uh, you can do HTTP failovers or recoveries, uh, but it's kind of uh, out of scope right now. <laughs> um, and there's one more last, uh, one more last thing, one more last uh, component, and it's called gateway. And this is really, I'd say, the easiest, the easiest component. <laughs> Uh, because it's a component that's, that runs on, on the edge of your service mesh, and it's basically an entry point and point where every, every traffic goes in and out. And what gateways do uh, is you basically define on what port they should listen, what protocol they should accept, or what host they should accept. And these gateways are then, are then used to direct traffic to virtual services where all the rules are defined, and uh, one, one thing I forgot to say is uh, virtual services can be bound to gateways. So in this example, you see gateway. And if we go back, you can actually see the first rectangle. And the first rectangle says, bound this virtual service to the gateway. So it's like a uh, virtual service is basically a component that bounds to gateways and then to subsets to direct traffic. All right, so going, going up, I uh, just want to take a quick look at how, how the, um, what's the life of the request, I'd say. So the traffic goes into gateways, and gateways basically uh, are either open or closed for the traffic, which means uh, we need to have uh, HTTP traffic on port 80 from the domain example.com to actually uh, be able to pass through that gateway. And then we go to the virtual service. And the virtual service, what it does, it takes, a, it takes um, um, the traffic or the request and it goes from top to bottom of all the rules that we, that we added there and basically matches these. So if it doesn't match, it goes, it goes uh, further. If, if it matches, it basically stops and says, all right, this is where the traffic will go. And tags the traffic with subset, if you're using subsets, on where the traffic should be directed next. And then, then it goes to the service, and what service does is basically just accepts these policies on load balancing or TLS, uh, which will just, uh, which basically just helps you tweak, uh, tweak the in infrastructure on traffic routing. So to summarize this, I know the, these are uh, that may be a lot of lot of things, uh, but there are three main components of Istio. Uh, one of them is gateway, the second one is virtual service, and a destination rule. Uh, gateways are just entry points. Virtual services are basically routers where you, where you just say, all right, so these are my rules, and if it accepts any of these rules, then, then uh, get a traffic somewhere else. And you also uh, do things like failovers or timeouts. 
And then we have the sanction rules, which are, which are basically policies on how to direct traffic further. And as you, can, as you could see, uh, what we did was we basically took a Kubernetes infrastructure and just adopted Istio on that. And it's what you can do in any of your projects. So if you think you don't actually need Istio right now, you don't need to use it right now. What you can do is you can just use Kubernetes. And then when you feel like you actually need more of these things, like uh, the traffic routing, the policies and stuff, then you can just add up Istio there. And it provides a declarative networking API, which basically means that, you, that anybody, whoops, anybody uh, should be able to, to understand what's happening. And any member of the team should be able to uh, actually just read, if not write, then just read the, the, the configurations and say, all right, this is what's happening there. Um, one last thing, uh, it's kind of uh, easy to read when it's, when it's written, but it's not really easy to write the code. And uh, one must really uh, look at these pitfalls such as labels, because if, if the if the traffic is not going where you want, you may actually have uh, just a problem with destination rules or labels. And that's it from me. Uh, if you want to learn, learn more about this topic, uh, you can just go here uh, or look at this presentation. Uh, these, these documentations are basically technical or uh, they really go deep uh, into, into like technical stuff and you can see all the references there. Uh, so they may really help you there. Thank you. Any questions? We have a lot of time. Uh, inside the service mesh, service to service track, like that's my understanding. That's sort of the classic use case for Istio. Yep. Could you expand on that or talk about it? Uh, with the service mesh, or wh why do you well, need? Istio within, not just as an ingress controller. Yep. Like there's other ones for that. There's Ambassador and mm -hmm. OpenShift has HA proxy and stuff like that. So I was more interested in how Istio operates. I think it's a sidecar. Is that Yep. Yeah. So uh, basically, what happens in Istio is every workload you deploy, uh, Istio deploys something called Sidecar within it, which is a proxy. And the proxy then allows all these restrictions and policies because every time you apply configurations, uh, every time you apply configuration, all these sidecars are basically uh, updated to comply with these policies that you just set. So, uh, yeah, it operates with a lot of, lot of envoys. Here's a good one. How do, um, sorry, no. <laughs> what, what types of, um, is it JWT or what type of authentication is there from service to service that's supported by? Uh, well, so there's TLS, there are, there are certificates everywhere. Uh, but uh, if you wanna, if you want to just implement like a user to service uh, authorization, you can actually use uh, JWT as well on virtual service. Yeah. Yep. So how, how does the tenancy look like in Istio? Will every development team have the own Istio? In a, in a Kubernetes cluster, you will have one service mesh, which is shared among different development. Uh, right now, what we do right now is we have one service mesh. Uh, but you can have multiple. Yeah. There's there's a lot of is isolation that uh, comes with Istio, so uh, it seems you kind of like at start you always need just one Istio. But if you have like a really great like really large teams, then maybe like creating multiple clusters and so on makes sense. Yeah. Anybody else? Yep. So when, when building the application, are you using service mesh. Uh, and I want to kind of troubleshoot, you know, where it goes, and, and just for testing and development, is it easy to find out these things? And, yep. Yeah, it is. I think there, there was actually uh, one, more, what, one talk today about Istio and observability. Uh, so one of the main features of Istio uh, like with, with traffic management is basically observability. And because all the traffic flows through these sidecars, all the, like, you can see all the traces, you can see all the metrics and all the stuff in Istio as well. So it's really easier to debug than Kubernetes, yeah. Hmm? One more question. Uh, what happens if you find um, multiple virtual services to a single gateway. What happens with the traffic? Uh, multiple virtual services to a single gateway. Oh, uh, no, it's not. Uh, what happens is 
basically all these virtual services are merged together. So there's, uh, I think there's also uh, like a merge algorithm for virtual services and as well for gateways. Any other question? Uh, URL um, sort of based routing. Mm -hmm. Is that in okay. the virtual service or? In yep. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So uh, if uh, URL, URL or traffic uh, content-based uh, uh, routing is based uh, in the virtual service, yes, it is. You can basically what 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 I did with with uh, with headers. You can do the same thing with URLs. You, so we can just say uh, every URL that has prefix of this or that is exact exactly this. Yeah. In this example, what's setting the the header that you're filtering based on? Uh, what's setting the header? Uh, client, basically. Just uh, basically, you we accept traffic from from the internet from from some client, and then uh, then we sort sort of like a filter on that. So your client would need to know that they want version yeah. two of your. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You can you can you can do um, multiple things here. You don't need to really. Um, you can you can do things like set cookies instead of instead of headers, so these will travel with with uh, with the clients all the time. Then. Yep. Uh, how about how about using SSL? Because uh, mm -hmm. you would be unable to match headers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, TLS can be basically uh, implementing the gateway where you just say, all right, so this is where the certificates are, and it will mount it. All right, any other question? Yeah? Um, how does it behave if you have multiple sidecars uh, kind of restricting access? Would there are multiple companies that already provide like for example, to scan or I could take the configuration of the So what happens if if I have multiple like multiple types of sidecars, if they and they comply with Istio, I mean if they comply with the configuration, I don't see a problem. But another technology, so another company that provides a similar functionality. Like, so uh, you can define what IP ranges or IP ranges can pass and whatnot, and mm -hmm. also the segments and monitor. Yeah. If you have multiple sidecars with a similar functionality, one box. Okay, so if you can filter based on IPs, ah uh, yes, you can. Yes. Uh, what it, what you can do is basically you can uh, you can say also for for like incoming and outgoing requests uh, where they can go or if if uh, which addresses should be accepted. So you can basically whitelist blacklist things. All right. Last question. Or not? Oh yeah. <coughs> Uh, is, is it a virtual service or is there really, a, I assume in this case, is it part that actually terminates the yep. SDLS and stuff? Is it possible to have them uh, built on a node or uh, with a node selector on a group of nodes? Um, do you mean like a daemon or? So it's a pod. I mean, can you yep. can specify where, where I would like my pods to? So what happens here in Istio is basically gateways are also just configurations, and these are configurations for ingress. So gateways are bound to ingress, ingress gateways, which are physical proxies. Does it, does it answer your question, or? <laughs> how, how is the gateway implemented in the, in the, in the Kubernetes world? The gateway? Uh, well, the gateway only bounds to a, like it creates a configuration for the ingress controller. So it, it configures uh, a physical proxy. But it runs as a pod. The gateway? Uh, okay. Sorry. But get a pod where I implement the gateway. Oh, no. Uh, do, do you mean like if you, if you just uh, release like free gateways, if you have three different pods or? Yeah. Uh, no, you shouldn't have. I believe, uh, well, we can, we can just discuss it later, but I think you shouldn't have these. You should have just one pod, which is an ingress controller, and then the gateway is just configure this. 
uh, well, you get a, you get just a single pod, right? For which is a ingress controller. Yep. All right. Thank you, everybody.